put in the ball and it comes out. And of course he's not quite happy. Um, <laughs> so there are different explanations possible for this to happen. Uh, the, shape, the shape of the hole can be wrong, but we, don't, we aren't going to study this because it depends wholly on the shape of the ball, which is not really a parameter. Uh, the spin can have the ball bounce off, but we are also not going to study this because we consider the golfer to be experimented and got the right spin. Uh, the collision with the flag from long shots can have the ball fall down and bounce out again, but we are also not going to consider this uh, because the flag is very but differs greatly, and we are rather going to concentrate on the last thing, on the last case, when the ball rolls around the hole and comes out this way. So, um, we have uh, modeled our this with an experimental setup um, because with the golf ball it's quite harder to observe. So, we use the hole, which is transparent, uh, so that we can see what happens inside. Uh, and as, instead of the golf ball, which is quite voluminous, we use a uh, mouse ball because it has also a high um, adherence and it rolls very well. Uh, so, you have here the different parameters which you are going to study in this. Uh, uh, in this uh, presentation, namely the radius of the hole, the distance the ball rolls on a rail to gain velocity, uh, the radius of the ball, A, and the diameter of the rail, E. So uh, let's watch what uh, this experiment looks like with our setup. So the ball is let go from there and it rolls out. So here is it from, from the top, the ball is inside and comes out again. So it has really been in the hole and comes out again. Um, so, well, uh, how are we going to study this uh, phenomena? First of all, we are going to develop a theoretical explanation of the motion. Then we are going to deduce from this theoretical explanation the conditions for the phenomenon to happen. And finally, we will check experimentally if, there are, uh, if they are verified, if these are really the right conditions. So, um, well, let's start with uh, the theoretical um, explanation, and to do so, we will first look at experiments. So this is with oil inside the hole, and we see that the ball directly falls down. So this shows that the friction between the ball and the hole is really a crucial parameter. If this does not happen, the ball does not come out. And here we have two other videos, first of all. The ball, from another angle, we see that the ball completely uh, goes into the hole without rolling on the surface, which is confirmed if we put a mark on the ball, which we have rolled in the axis of the rail, we see that this axis is still the same as here, which means that the motion, the rotation of the ball has not been modified at all by the hole, and it's still rotating in the same uh, direction. And consequently, we think that the rotation of the ball is the parameters that makes the ball come out. So how are we going to study this? Uh, studying the position of the ball, of its mass center, is quite easy. We have uh, the following uh, equations, giving its position, its speed, and its acceleration at all times, uh, quite easily. But what we need is to know how the ball is rotating. So um, we do this, all these studies in a cylindrical refer um, referential, uh, which you have here, and we are just going to uh, try to find out what the, mo the rolling uh, looks like. So we are we are now going to try to relate the rolling of the ball with uh, the speed. So to do so, we use this formula we have up here, which is uh, granted for any uh, rolling object. And given that we assume that the ball rolls without sliding, we have uh, the speed of at the contact point with the surface, which values zero, we can just get this equation and after calculation, we find set of equations number one. Um, but this is not sufficient, so we're going to have to put in some more um, elements. And we are now going to, relate, to try to relate the force, the forces and the speed of the ball. Um, and with a Newton's second law, we have this, as the only forces applied are uh, the weight and the resist the reaction, uh, given we assume uh, we uh, neglect uh, friction with air. Um, 
So uh, we get, after calculations once more, set of equations number two. Uh, finally, we are going to relate the uh, rolling with the forces. Um, so to do so, uh, we use uh, this uh, theorem up there. Um, and after calculations with this, we get set of equations number three. Um, and uh, consequently, with all these set of equations, we are going to be able to uh, get out the motion of the ball according to the z-axis, which is the one interesting us, as the z-axis is uh, the height of the ball. So, uh, as I said, with set of equations one and two, we find that the rotation uh, speed gamma and uh, theta are constant, which means that the ball uh, is rolling um, like this on itself when the ball is here, like this at constant p and around the, the hole at constant speed. Uh, and we have an expression of the rolling uh, like this uh, here. Um, so with all this we find uh, a differential equation, second degree differential equation, um, which has uh, an easy uh, general solution and in the end we find this expression for uh, the height of the ball as a function of time. So let's uh, then try to deduce from this expression uh, the conditions necessary for the ball to come out. So uh, first of all, we uh, notice that this model is actually uh, predicting why the ball would either come out or go down. Um, we have here uh, the parameters used, and we see that with um, a speed of 1.3 centimeters per second, we have the ball going down and then coming up again. And with a lesser speed, we have the ball directly going down to 14, um, uh, 14 centimeters, which is the bottom of the hole. Um, so now that we know that the model is actually predicting both situations, we are going to try to predict uh, when the ball is coming out and when it's not coming out. But to do so, we need to know how our ex experimental setup influences the initial conditions when the ball gets into the hole. Um, to do so, we are going to study the property of the rolling on the rail, and we get uh, these formula uh, with Newton's second law, and, um, and with this uh, we can find the speed of the ball when it reaches the end. So with this initial condition, oh, it's not going to be, well, uh, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, so with this um, equation, we find um, So we find is this uh, the two um, above mentioned uh, initial conditions for um, for the, the system, um, namely uh, the rotation, um, the minimum speed for the phenomenon to allow the ball to come out. So we determine this here. But uh, to be uh, easier done and checked on experiments, we also calculated the minimum distance on the rail, which the ball has to travel on the rail to be able to come out again, so which we have Q. So from this formula, uh, we see first of all that the radius of the ball is not intervening at all in the formula, and only R, which means the radius of the hole, is intervening, which is interesting to be uh, noted. And indeed, uh, we have, can have here the variation of different parameters and the effect on the minimum speed, and we see that if A augments, there is no effect. Um, if R augments, the minimal speed augments. Namely that if we have a bigger hole, we will need more speed to travel around the hole and connect. And if uh, the angle um, of the rail, uh, the rail makes with the, the extremities a point of contact between the ball and the rail, uh, augments, the minimum speed augments too. So, uh, now let's try Let's try to check this experimentally. So first of all, we will check if the rotation around the ball, uh, around the hole, and the, on the ball on the top is constant. And we have here the experimental points. So on these points, you can notice that uh, the error bars are much larger uh, for extreme positions on one of these uh, segments because uh, we have drawn only one line on the ball, and this line, of course, disappears at some points when the other rotations have disappeared. And at these points, the errors are not convertible. But even if we uh, do not consider these points, we notice that the speed is indeed 
constant as the slope of these, um, of these experimental fits are constant. Uh, moreover, we have calculated the minimum distance uh, on the rail uh, for different uh, angles, and we see that they fit quite well with the experiment. Well, well that the theory fits quite well with the experiment, given um, the general uh, aspect of the model, which is not taking into account many, um, well, which is not taking into account friction or imperfections of the model. Um, so, uh, well, what now, for the case of the golfer, if we don't want to be uh, frustrated, well, he has to uh, avoid uh, the speed of 1.6 meters per second if he is not sure to hit the very center of the hole, uh, using all the um, official uh, dimensions used in golf, as for example the 108 millimeters of radius. Um, so, well, thank you for your attention.